<laughs> Alrighty, welcome back. We're back at it. I'm your man, Bad Chad, and Queen Jolene's on the camera, and Dave is taking us around and showing us uh, the amazing collection they have here at Gallopin. Um, the historian, I'm going to call him from now on, because he's, <laughs> he's teaching me a bunch of stuff about things that I, you know, I like to know about, but I do not know sometimes. And um, yeah, we're going to start right here, I guess. We got a green 32. Yeah, is it a green 32? Yeah, that's yeah. my sometimes daily driver. So you'll open that door and run her out and take mm -hmm. off, and, and, and that's, what you, that's what you're running around in. Yep. That's and awesome. This car, I found the shell of this car in a barn in Michigan and when I was like 10 years old. <laughs> and I was able to finally get it from the guy about 15 years ago. So when I built it, I left all the original paint on it that was... I like that. ...that was put on it in Southern California in 1959. So it was, it was kind built of here as a hot rod, driven to Detroit, taken apart. So I, I just wanted to drive the car I saw when I was a kid. I like it that way. I mean, I'm, I'm starting to like this. I like the history, I guess. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not scared of that, yep. like anything that, I, I look past that. It doesn't bother oh, yeah. me. That just means, you know, it's been used and it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's been loved and, and you're driving it every day. That's cool. It's, dang it. Yeah, it's just a, cool. a little... Like, it's got a nice new clean interior in it, yeah. I would say. Yeah. Yep. A 471 blown 373 Chevy with oh, wow. a Muncie four speed. Oh, wow. So you're, so you're getting home quite quick then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love this thing. Yeah, That's the cool. only car I'll never sell. Right on. And I don't know what this thing is. <laughs> yeah, never seen that before. No, never right? seen that before. 1966 Six. is when it all happened and started? Yep, and this is number two of the original three from the series. So they had three cars made? Yes. There was the first one that was the Lincoln Future of Concept. Right. There was this one, and the third one was the same, except for it was covered in black flocking, that fuzzy material. Okay. And they did that so it wouldn't reflect light, so they could shoot night scenes during the day. Makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. Jolene would know. Can I walk over here? And yeah. Go? So is this a glass car? Yeah, this is probably the first of the glass cars. First of the glass Batmobiles, anyway. There's a bunch of copies of them now. But this one's the real thing. The most amazing. famous car in the world, this one. You can probably go to Bangladesh and show a picture of this, and they'd be like, oh, that's a Batmobile. I didn't know where Bangladesh is, but you're right. <laughs> you're probably right. This thing here we saw at the at the Grand National Roadster show. This thing is crazy cool. I'm yeah. just kind of wondering where, where, the, where the young person was at in the head to, to think of. I'm not sure. It started out as a child's drawing on a napkin. Okay. And it turned into the first abstract show car. Yeah, so we're, been, ca we're calling this abstract? Just because yeah, because it's just an abstraction of a Model T. Yeah. That's so cool. What is, the, what is the black on the back? Is it metal or is it? No. No, this is primer. Okay. And it's all fiberglass body and it's okay. just been painted over and over. So this is all the different colors and layers of the candies and everything. So will this be restored? Yeah. Yeah, I'll restore it back to okay. when it was candy tangerine flake in 1965. Wow. You'll go that far with it? Like yep. It's been missing for over 50 years, and we were just yeah, able to get it. On it eh? Yeah, there's all kinds of crap going on on the internet now, and I stay away from all of it. Sometimes it's better just to, you know, just not... let it go. Yeah, just... My job is to make this new again when the time comes, and that's all I care about. Other people's opinions have never been my concern. That's their belly button. <laughs> Torsion bar suspension. Yeah, like. Little injected Buick. It's got a lot of really rare parts on it. I'm really happy that all, all of them are still there. Yeah, that's so cool. It's makes, an easy restoration. Ma makes, makes you think, or makes me think anyways. Mm-hmm. It does. Well, I guess if there's one reason for this whole place, I would say it's to inspire people Imagine. to do cool shit. So Yeah, do what you want. Right. Yeah, do what you want. 
blocky Jijian's roadster that he built in 1948. I, yeah, I've seen that car in a magazine before. I didn't know exactly what's going on here, but the body is part it's of a Model the T molded to a 34 Ford chassis. And the and that's the, been bobbed in the yeah, back. And the and the seats are down inside. Seats are down, and there's a trough for the clutch pedal even. Oh wow! Yeah. My favorite part of this whole car, like I loved Blackie. He was yeah. a good friend, and him and I, you know, did shows all over for years and years and years. And I miss him and George the most of all the legends, right? The brake lights on this are on a switch so he could run from the police and not have the brake lights give him away when he was a little hoodlum That's in the cool. 50s in Fresno. Tell, tell, well, me, tell me something. Yes. Where could I get a set of lights that look like that? Off of a, a commercial truck from the early 50s. Okay. Jolene, you, you need a set of lights like that. This thing is cooler and dang. I've never seen this. Or crane. you can just make them. I have some buddies down in Orange County that can machine all those for you. Lights? Yeah. They'll machine the acrylic and the aluminum. Wow. Yep. This thing's quite something else. I it's really right. cool. I, yeah, it's something else. And when he would is display it? this at car shows, he'd flip it up on its side on the two tires so they could see all the chrome underneath. Is this an AA MBR winning car? Yeah. Like American Most Beautiful? Yeah. So it did win the big trophy, eh? Yep, it won AMBR. That's we usually have two other AMBR winners here, but they're on loan to the Speedway Museum now. Okay. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I've seen this one go across the block. Yeah, the Hirahata Merc. Yeah. Beautiful. Known as the... It's hard to imagine most. somebody would want to cut up their new car. And it was. It was a brand new Merc when they started killing it. Yeah. It was hard to believe that they would start cutting that up, but that's how it all starts, is it not? Mm-hmm. Regarded as the most famous custom car in the world. So traditional custom, this is the kind of the bar. It's beautiful. It even did a month in a glass house in front of the White House. It was, it's the only custom car in the National Registry. Like how they cut, I didn't notice they cut the corners off the trunk lid. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Well done. I even <laughs> like this. They kick the I like that. I, like, I love that. That's awesome. Isn't it, baby? Huh? It's awesome. I like that. You show. won't find much boring stuff here. No. No. Not at all. This would be Elvira's car? That is Elvira's real car. Yeah. Not the one that was made at Counts. That's, oh. a, that's a copy. Yeah. And this is the original one. And the way you can tell is it still has the front part of the roof. When Barris did this, he didn't use a convertible. Oh, so Barris built this. Yes. I, did, I didn't know Barris did this car. Mm -hmm. and Barris she... built all these on this, this wall. Yeah, this was for the Mistress of the Dark movie. That's so cool. <laughs> Keep saying that. It's like, wow. I'm in my happy spot. It's nice. Even this stuff, you know what I mean? Like that stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah that's cool. It's fantastic. Yeah, it is. And we have a, what would we call this? That's the rickshaw. The what? The rickshaw. The rickshaw. Never seen it before in my life. So they actually just reissued the model kit of this one. You can buy it at like Walmart now, but this was built for the World's Fair in Osaka, Japan in 1970. <laughs> it's not super PC now, but it's amazing and it's all original. Like Von Dutch did all this. It's, it's pretty bitchy. What was he like as a person? Did you, did you get to meet him? I never met him, but I've heard he was an asshole. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. But he was talented, so I choose to look past Yes. You know, and admire him for what he was. He was brilliant. Just kind of a dick. So what are we going to do? Go up the line or are we going to go back and forth? Yeah, let's stay on the okay. bear side and then we'll just come I've back I've seen, I've seen you driving this one. Yeah, the little red wrecker. This was made for a TV show called Sanford and Son. Right. And then the show was canceled before this was used. So it never, it never aired. But it's really cool. I love the design. It's really gnarly to drive. 
and it's really well done by the looks of things. Like it's this is one well. that I restored on the TV show. Okay, it's beautiful. The chrome on this thing, like whoa. Yeah, I took all this stuff off to send it to Tennessee to get chromed, and the chromer lost one of these, or the not the chromer, the shipper. How do you lose that? Exactly, it weighs like a hundred pounds. So I had to have them send it all back so I could build the piece that was missing and then send it all back again. What a, it was a nightmare. Oh, I like that, how the exhaust, that's cool. But this has like a legit, like 900 horse Hemi in it. I think it's, I could sort of tell when you stepped in it, like it was <laughs> kind of like, woo. Yeah, it's terrifying to drive. And there's nothing between your ass and the blower belt. Oh, I never thought of that. Ripped the yeah. shirt right, look, and rip, you look out the roof. Ripped the shirt right off you. Yeah. Huh? Wouldn't that be something now? Yeah, I've got <laughs> a really good scar North on Central. my elbow from the blower belt. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Well, see, most of these cars, when they were built, they weren't made to actually function. But when I restore them, I make them work without changing the appearance. So I might have went a little too far with that one. It's okay. Yeah. It looks great. It looks fantastic. Of course, the Munsters coach. This one I did not restore, so I did take no responsibility for the things that are wrong. Well, if you don't um, point them out, I won't know. Okay. We'll just leave it there. there but it you is go. one of the coolest cars on the planet. I'm, I'm one of those guys, too, right? When I used to do, well, do customer work and stuff, I'd always point out the stuff that I didn't like. And basically, if you don't point it out, they'd never know anyway. Yeah. I've done that so many times, and it's probably, you know, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. I guess I was just trying to do the best job I could, and, and Correct. I wanted them to know. What I knew, I guess. It's crazy. Love mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Cool. Um, then this is the mail truck, which is interesting in its own right because it was commissioned by the U.S. government to promote the zip code when it went to five digits in 1968. So it's <laughs> rad. And how would this promote that? Because it says zip code and it has zippy and oh, okay. I don't know. I can remember when our telephone got more numbers. I said, how am I going to remember that? It's five digits. And then it'd be, <laughs> you know what I mean? Then it, it was two at once. It was two. And then it went to 582. And then it, like, then the number. But it was all pretty good shit. Do you see the, the seats in here? Yeah. I don't like an ice here. cream parlor. Yeah. That's cool. That is cool. Yeah. It's badass. <laughs> badass. Oh, no, that better not Me be. and Joe Wing could have this one. It's like a bed. This is a Volkswagen, uh, is it not? Fuck. That's not good. <laughs> That's the bed buggy. The bed bugs. The bed bug. Bear's I have no buggy. idea why he built that. They made a model kit of it. But I don't think it really had a purpose. It would be the most horrible thing to drive. The shifter is over your left shoulder and the brake is the handle on the right. I, I would say he probably built it because he could. Because <laughs> <laughs> he could. That's so cool. i never seen that one before either. It, look, it looks good. I, I mean, I, I just like the look of the roof, how it's leaned down. Mm -hmm. I like how the, yeah, it looks good. Headlights on it. I Listen. like it just because it's silly. Well, I mean, let's face the it. The wood lights are bitching. Those are the only brass wood lights I've ever seen. All the other ones are chrome, like on the mail truck. Yeah. And they're called wood headlights? Wood lights. Wood lights. Those were only available to coach built or aftermarket. Okay. They never came on a production car. Now they're about 10 grand a pair. Are you serious? Yeah. Well, this bad boy. And this is the end of the Barra stuff. This is the Fireball 500 from the movie with the same name. The 65 Barracuda. I don't know why someone doesn't build something like this now and drive it around. For sure. That's cool and dang it. <laughs> so th this car has not been restored, I take no, it? No, it's the logo has been changed, but all the candies and everything are original. And this, he, this must change it too, actually. After a while, has it changed? Or? It has. This is the only three-piece one of these I've ever seen. 
most of them are one piece yeah. with that all being one or just the crest without the car what would this have in it for an engine this would this run and drive so i got two 60 something v8 it's the smallest v8 of yep. the of the time but it runs and drives fine i've drove okay. it all over the place i enjoy these lights these lights yeah. are cool so Those were really aftermarket cool. sports car mirrors. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We got some Winfield stuff over here. Yep, there's Gene. Maybe I want a dragster on our wall. <laughs> like that, that came out of a barn in Ohio that was parked in 1960. See, I, see, I love that stuff. That's, mm -hmm. that's cool. That's got an Oles in it, injected yeah. Oles. That's cool. People say I don't. I, I build things that are not safe. Look at it. A rear end right beside your nuts, right? Yep. And that blows up and goodbye nuts. <laughs> I've never so, seen this up close. This one's really nice, except for the roof's leaking on it right now because of all the crazy rain. That's too bad. Yeah. It'll be the third time I've had that spot fixed in the last month. Someone restored this truck, did they not? I think Squeegees did this one. They did a beautiful job on they it. They did a really nice job. Beautiful. Beautiful. Gene must be proud of it, seeing it oh, here and that very, sort of stuff. Yeah. Then we got another Gene truck. Yep, yeah, the Pacifica. Yeah. This is the yeah. second Pacifica yeah. that he built to replace his original one. This is the one I, I was at his house and helped play on. Oh, nice. Yeah, I, I worked on this one for a little while. Okay. We had a bunch of us there. I spent a week or two on it. And uh, I never I never got to see it. I got to see it like this when he brought it to uh, Moncton Nationals. Okay. But uh, I didn't, I just seen it. In How'd prime. you like hanging out in the desert for two weeks? I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> I, I didn't realize it was so cold at nighttime. Oh yeah, it gets cold. I, I damn near froze. <laughs> Gene gave me a little room with about, I don't know, 2,000 magazines in it and give me a, a spot to lay down <laughs> and he, and he gave me a couple blankets, but I froze every night. It's like, yeah. I, and I couldn't wait to get to work because I get warmed up, you know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, it was good. Nice. I got a little picture at home where he thanked me for coming down. But that's cool. when I, I first met him. He did a, a chop on a car and I mm -hmm. took the course and, and that's what happened. I think the world of Gene. Well, I yeah. I absolutely love him. I think so many people do, you know. Let's face it, he's a good guy. This is Stage Fright. And this was one of my very first Hot Wheels as a kid. This was a lot of Dan Wood's influence and in building on this one. Look at the suspension on it. Mm -hmm. He was pretty famous for all of his funky suspensions a lot of cantilever springs and um, horizontal opposed springs sometimes on some of them over there yeah so he's we'll kind see. of in yeah that's something else he was way ahead of his time he was like really this is again cooler than dang it <laughs> that's cool yeah so the story goes this was so all this is all this he built this at a like what's what's this building? The two sides were hanging in a restaurant in Downey. Okay. And one of the members of their car club was Larry Wood, the Hot Wheels designer, and he sketched this while they were having breakfast, and they bought the sides off the restaurant and built this. Hmm. I want to go home and build something funny. <laughs> I'll probably just end up going back to work. Right yeah, this one. Yep. Boot Hill Express. Mm -hmm. Probably one of the most famous custom cars of all time. I don't know how many times I built this model as a kid. I never built many models as a, as a young person, but uh, I do, I, I recognize this, that's for sure. The good thing is, is you can still build them as an adult. Nobody judges. Now, I wonder, like, like, when I built the Green Goblin, every, uh, the whole time I was building it, I was kind of thinking, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what am I doing? What am I doing this for? You know what I'm saying? But uh -huh. I kept going with it because I had to finish because I, I right. said I was going to finish it for the show. But he, he, they must have thought the same thing when they were building this. They were probably thinking, what the hell are we doing? Or were they excited and they wanted to get it finished? I'm not sure. But Well, the, Ray Farner, when he did this, he did a whole funeral procession. He had a flower car a wake wagon, a trike, and he had this really bitchin' procession that was really cool, and now they're all broken up and in different places. I just like the big tires. <laughs> mm-hmm. Crazy. 
crazy. More nice posters on the wall. <laughs> and this this is yours, is it not? Is this is, this you, is you, the one that I built to replace the original one that was lost. So I built this 20 years ago in my shop in Michigan. <laughs> Rescaled it. Was you thinking, the, what the hell am I doing when you were doing it, or what? Well, I knew what I was doing because I had the model. No, kit but I mean, I what are you doing it, it for? Like, yeah, kind of. Well, because it probably cost a bunch of money at the it time. Was a, it was a shitload of money, and and time. everyone thought I was crazy. Yeah, because and that, well, I mean, look at, the, look at the front end. I was thinking like, <laughs> but you know, I was. This was my favorite of all the Roth cars because it was so crazy with the two engines and everything, right? And. I don't know. It just it just sort of happened, and this was the car that sort of catapulted me into the this world of Custom restoring Caroline. all this stuff or building it. And so, like I said, if you've never built it, where would you be now? If you know, correct. Yeah. So yeah. you're happy that you built it. Obviously, this was my first real build and my first magazine cover, and like it, it all happened with this one. This is how Bo and I met. Right. Um, I tried to sell him this car. And then another guy came and paid way more for it, so I sold it to him, and then it moved around a little bit, and then he was able to get it and add it to this place. Well done. Well done. So basically everything from the trikes this way is, is Ed Roth. Okay. So this is the wishbone. <laughs> that thing is so cool. Yeah. We restored this one on the show as well. Yeah. So this is a Volkswagen? Yeah, I think he said it was a Porsche, but a essentially Porsche. it's just a Volkswagen. And it's narrowed up heavily. Yes. I always hated that it was wider in the front than the back because it goes against proportional laws of aesthetics. I just started to notice what I'm looking at here. This is pretty cool. <laughs> That's pretty fun to see all these. Yeah. Those are cool. Uh -huh. I keep saying that word too much. It's just about how I feel. That's all. That's how I feel. This is called Tweety, Tweety this is Pie. This Tweety Pie. Tweety Pie. Mm -hmm. This is one of the three most famous tea buckets in the world. What Over would, what five would, million model kits of this sold. I read something when he was, he got a contract, he got a penny per model. Is, was yeah. that true? And he made $16,000, like, you know, like, whatever. I yeah. Guess, like, that'd be a lot of models. You get $16,000 of mm -hmm. whatever he made in a year. Right. Or a penny per model. That'd be quite a, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Back in the day, I think it meant more than it does now. Oh, man. You, you say back in the day it meant more? Well, yeah. A penny a penny per model then right. was way more than it is now. Right, right. That, you know, this sure. car was 59. Yeah. So the dollar went a lot farther back then. You know, I like how they made, like, you know, this... The frame, it did not it's a matter. Thirty-two you know, frame, and he just wrapped it around, around and welded yeah. it together. Right. There you go. Mm-hmm. It's over. It's got really good proportions on this thing. Like he did a lot of weird shit with the grill that nobody would do, but it works. Yeah, he made that. He sectioned it quite heavy, did it not? Sectioned, and it does got a nice, it got a nice look, doesn't it? Yeah. It's got. He finished the trim mm -hmm. down around the front. Looks good. <laughs> the headlight bars, you just kind of bend yeah. some tight and put some head on. Cool. One thing Roth was famous for is he... I never got to meet him. He didn't own a tape measure. <laughs> I, know, I know who that guy is. And he wouldn't use a drill. I, Every my, hole is cut with a torch. My, my drill is the arch enemy for me. I don't <laughs> like. I hate the drill. I hate the drill. And I don't use a tape measure too much. I try to mm -hmm. stay away from it. It slows you down. Is, this is Rotar, who's awfully dirty now because I think yeah. I had the skylight open last week um, this car actually hovered in 1960 61 yeah the two triumphed motorcycle engines on their side and, but he also was Baby, demoing it yeah that's crazy isn't it it looks like the little car that I seen and it's kind of the got, Jetsons well there's a there was a car in your car show you guys were at in Japan is there Moon oh kind? yeah there yeah, 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 the little go-kart. Well, they come from this. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, it come from that. Yeah. I mean, inspired. I mean, so it's this not one is a really good lesson in how Roth's brain worked because he used 
what was available, but he had ways of making use of things without making it obvious. Yeah. So, like, the top of that is a 59 Caddy front bumper section. I see it now, but I would never thought it before. Like, it's the bumper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. The antennas are just takeoffs. Uh -huh. These are tail lights. My favorite part are these are kids' soccer shin guards. <laughs> <laughs> and if you look down inside, you can see that it was actually wired with Christmas lights. Well, there you go. Because he had it. I like the seat, how they got it upholstered and stuff. Huh? Could you imagine firing that thing up for the first time, man? You want to stand back? Oh, yeah, right there you can see. See the Christmas lights? <laughs> yeah, I do see the Christmas lights, yeah. Because wire's wire, and that's what he would use. Wire's wire. Man, I'm telling you, this is the best. So this is Roth's shop truck that we found in a barn in Oklahoma. This definitely has been restored, obviously. I did a full super anal restoration on this one. Yeah. The original grill is next to you because I didn't want to paint over the original painting. Gotcha. So, but I restored it back to the way it was when Roth did it. It's nice. It's beautiful. So he started with a mint green truck and painted over it when it was yeah. brand new. So I restored it to a mint green truck. Put it all the, together, the green inside the thing there. Yeah, and cool. then painted it the same way he did. And wherever there's green is where it was when I took it apart. <laughs> you preserved it. Mm -hmm. I can remember that when this one hit the magazine. Oh yeah, this was a big story. Yeah, this was probably that. the biggest barn find story until the T just came out. Wasn't it a strip joint? It was. <laughs> it was worse than that. <laughs> it was worse than that. It was. It was being used as a dumpster outside of a sex shop in Juarez, Mexico. The most dangerous city in the world. And yeah. that's what it looked like when we found it. Yeah, it was a big deal. Like, it was pretty cool. So this was Bill and I's first project together. After it was found, I flew out and sort of led the restoration on this one. All chrome chassis on it. Mm-hmm. And this it has the 265 my mind, like yeah. out of Ed Roth's 55 Chevy. That was his daily driver at the time. And he took the engine he out. He took of the it. engine out and put it in this. He's a true car guy. He needed uh -huh. an engine. He took it out of his car and put right. it in there and went for it. Yep. Well, this thing back here, what's oh, this yeah, one called? There's, a, there's one of the Repop outlaw bodies back there oh. that I'll probably, I'll never build that into a car because there's already a couple clones. But it's neat to just have the body. And then this, yeah. this chopper that a friend of mine built. <laughs> it's just silly, but it's, it fits. Hey, man, it's cool. Mm -hmm. I like this here. Well done on this, oh, you know, making that and, yeah. and getting that and look like he's pinstripe in there. Mm -hmm. Robert Williams repainted the dash of that to replicate Roth's original mess that he made. So that, like, they, they did that. They, yes, they, they he went would, for it. Yeah. He would, like, mix paint on the dash and mm -hmm. whatever. Mix paint on the dash. So Bob and I spent... Okay, so he went around pinstriping this thing. He'd mix his paint up in there. Well, it turned into like this weird little art piece. So it was really hard to replicate that. Bob and I spent days like dumping out different colors and taking black and white photos because there was no color photos of this to restore it. Right. So we had to, you know, take a bunch of photos in black and white to figure out what the colors were. Gotcha. Amazing. Awesome. Now I can say I, I seen it. Um, Globe Hopper. He actually drove this from here to Alaska. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. That's a picture of him in Alaska. Inside, Robert <laughs> Williams named this one. There's the helmet that he's wearing in the photo. So it is actually is a motorcycle sort of deal it's, thing? It's a trike. trike. It has a Porsche engine. It's horrible to drive. It's not horrible. It's just it's weird because the brake pedal is above the gas pedal and it yep. swings the wrong way. So every time you try to hit the brake, you're looking for something. I don't feel so bad there. because I've done I've done some wild stuff, you know, try mm -hmm. to make stuff work, and you, you do what you got to do to make it work, mm -hmm. eh? You yep. Know, he was big into making motorcycles too, eh? Yeah, yeah. He really liked the trikes. So the great speckled bird is all original. That's never been touched. This one was a brand new kit that a friend of mine bought, and I built it for him and painted it. And that's the secret weapon that's an original Roth that has been restored.
Wow. I've never seen in I've never seen that. I've never seen that. I've never seen that. Yeah. I've never seen that. Over here we have I, our little Von Dutch section. Thing, yeah. Oh yeah, the Honda. I forgot the Honda. This was his daily driver when he worked at Knott's Berry Farm and this one he would just mix paint all over the place and do lettering at truck stops and car shows. He was the first one to start doing things on t-shirts, was he not? He was one of them. I don't know if he was, he wasn't really the first, but he was the one that mainstream stuff. He really made it popular. He was going Back to Back in the day, him. it was him and Roach and Mouse and a lot of different people knew. It. Some of the Roach and Mouse I've never heard tell of probably, but. Okay. Um, so all this is Von Dutch. This is the toad that he built out of a, a BMW Isetta. Harley Davidson fenders and just scraps. A lot of his tools, guns, knives. Um, I've seen art. his guns go, actually. I've seen a mm -hmm. gun go up for auction, man. I'm not sure if. Oh, yeah. The one that's unfinished is the one he was building when he died. Okay. What, uh, what age did he get to? I'm not even sure how old he lived, but. Quite a helmet. Yeah, there's a picture of him right there wearing that helmet. There you go. <laughs> That's crazy. My favorite thing is this little cannon that shoots 22 longs. Are you serious? Yeah. You carry that around. It's just a... Mm-hmm. Well, he's got the Vaughn Dutch right in his air ratchet. Yeah, he, he engraved everything that was his. He didn't want anybody take it anything. On Dutch on the guy, on the knife. Mm -hmm. Well done. All the sculptures that he did, more endless, endless stuff. Nice little bar area. Did you design this? Yeah. That's cool. Man, we need that in our house. Yeah, I made the bar. I made the light. That's cool. I had a buddy reupholster all this funky furniture to match. I gotta go and take a look. <laughs> That's so cool. Well done. That's <laughs> awesome. The service is off while they wait for a drink all day. Huh? The service is off while they wait for a drink all day. Oh, yeah, it's bullshit. You have a, it's a Williams painting up here, is it not? That's one of Robert Williams, yeah. Would he paint something like that big? Um, Sometimes, yeah. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And sometimes this big. It just depends. Right, yeah. Most of the stuff he's been doing lately is like three feet. Okay. Ish. Is he still alive, this man? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're basically my parents. Oh, uh, yeah, you were saying that. So, yeah. I'm, I'm hanging out with them tomorrow night. And, you this, know, be... This is their car over here, is it? Yeah, not? that's his oh. Prickly Heat 32 Roadster and his three-window coupe there. Right. His wife's talented, too, is she not? Very much so, yeah. Okay, I've seen that. Mm -hmm. I've seen the one up top. I've never seen that one before. I've never seen this one before. Most of his art is outside the hot rod world. Yes. Right? Seen this one? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We just w finished watching a documentary on Andy Warhol. Oh, yeah. Amazing how he much... He used to hang out with those guys. Kenny Scharf, who was in that quite a bit, is a good friend. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's quite, a, quite something, you know, for the art Keith that he Herring. was making. And, yeah, and it was then amazing. The, and the... Uh, I guess the value of, oh, of yeah, his stuff, like it's insanity. It is. It is insanity. So what is this all about? So that's one of Bob's sculptures. It's called the Diamond and a Goat's Ass. <laughs> I never even noticed it up there. A diamond and a Goat's Ass. That is a turn of the century term for pretentiousness. Hence the butler with the tails and all the snobby part of it serving up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I could go home and make one of those. The stamp collectors. Also wow. really rad. Nice. This is a, it's a really great piece, but I am afraid I can't tell the story about this one to your people. It looks innocent enough. Can I touch it? Yeah, it's fiberglass. So how would that be made? You um, think they would make a mold and then... So how these were made is they made, they would do it in, to scale 3D printed, 
and then they would make molds and then they would do the glass and then it was all it would all be hand finished and hand painted wow. and everything he's wearing paint the process he's wearing quarter penny loafers or mm -hmm. something else here let's go back over to this we missed we missed a couple over here geez i'm running around with zipper down well there's worse things this is the one that you so this is orchid yeah huh? this was built uh i built this for the autorama in detroit 10 years ago That's beautiful. this is probably my favorite build of all the builds is it white is it blue is it <laughs> it's ice blue with ice with blue. purple candy and pearl it's, white it's prettier in person mm -hmm. than it is of, on a lot of custom touches you you wouldn't one. uh you wouldn't i thought the car was white <laughs> That's it pretty, photographs it? differently in different places. That's pretty. Very okay. pretty. And then this one is the bubble top that came completely out of my head. So I built everything here from scratch. So this is your build? Yep. Well done. Well, that now, would you? 17 years ago. You should have got a few more carburetors put on it. They only <laughs> that manifold's the biggest one they make. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just joking. The Munsters coach has ten. Okay. This one has eight. Amazing. That's so cool. And I, like I did this I like one the same way Roth used to. So I sculpted this whole car out of plaster, and laid the glass over it, made a mold, and then a lot of work. Very messy. I don't have this much ambition anymore. Just to be clear, that shit's over. That shit's over. <laughs> I'm tired. Uh, pretty cool suspension on that too, eh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I kind of wanted to use the suspension as the grill. Yeah, like the thing's coming up, mm -hmm. hold the burn, shocks all hooked on the same thing. Wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. Alrighty, we still got this whole side over here. We'll just keep walking this way. Alrighty. And we're going over. Did this is the Pink Panther. That is, is it not? That's the Pink Panther. Okay. Limo. Yeah. Um <laughs> what was this? What was this built for? Like the ultimate limousine. The ultimate was designed by Ed Newton. Ed Newton? Ed Newton would be one of his workers or Ed Newton uh, was the art director for Raw Studios. Okay. Either before or after Robert Williams. Now my brain isn't working. Yeah. The inside of this is called the pleasure capsule. <laughs> I could see that. Yeah. He's got a bar it's got up a there. Bar, bar in front it's got a princess television. phone. I actually just did a really fun photo shoot with Carmen Electra here a few weeks ago in this. Yeah. It looks like, you know, a really well done thing, you know. I mean, it, it started really out well as an Oldsmobile Tornado. So it's front wheel drive with a 455. Yeah. I'm telling you, just... I did Leno's show with this one and drove him around. Okay. <laughs> Didn't like that day very much, but I was up here and he was back there just driving around. I got to go to the other side and check this out. It's got beautiful <laughs> paint on it. Absolutely gorgeous paint on it. I restarted a few years ago. Yeah, gorgeous. Crazy. Mm-hmm. It's a shame too, you know. Someone has an idea, or someone has a, a will and a want, and they build something like this, and people want to tear you down because they, they don't get it, or they don't want to get it, or they don't like it, or they've never seen one before. Well, and this is also how the cartoon started, like how the opening of the cartoon went. The, the opening of the cartoon went. This car would pull up in front of Grauman's in Hollywood, and oh. then they would have the little animation get out of it. So there were a bunch of toys, like model kits. It was it was kind of a big thing, but nobody understood it, of course, because right. it it looks more like an anteater than a pink panther. It's cooler than dang it, though. I can say that for sure. Mm -hmm. So these are the Dan Woods trucks. So Dan Wood Dan Woods built the milk truck when he was 15 years old in Woodshop in high school. Are you serious? So he was always way ahead of his time. Look at this. Look at the suspension on front of that. Uh huh. That's so cool. Like I mean, it is what it is, you know. Mm -hmm. But so the body is wood. The body's wood with glass over it. Right. 
And, you know, he showed up with this as a, I think, done as a 16-year-old kid, and that got him a job working for Ed Roth. And he went on to build some of Roth's cars that, that Ed got credit for, like the Druid Princess and Megacycle. Right on. His progression was leaps and bounds. This was the second car he built. So this is a full Indy style suspension. The first Jag rear end under a hot rod. Okay. Um, opposed coils on the front end. Indy tires all around. Custom made wires. The yeah. engine in this one is the second or rear engine from Mickey Thompson's two engine dragster. I'm not sure which one I like the best. This one is always my favorite. Yeah, I'm kind of looking. Uh, this one's cool, too. Yeah, I this like one. the pizza wagon, but it's got that round roof, and this one just looks more pissed off. Yeah. So I like this one. And so this one has a nail head in it. This one has an Olds. That one's a Pontiac. Do they run? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this one here's got a little suspension. Mm-hmm. Well done, very well done. I like I like the mirrors on or the glass. Yeah, that's cool, eh? Huh? That's that's good. That's good. I like it. I like that it. That was a typical thing. Like even the fire truck has yeah. it. This was the fire truck was built by Chuck Miller, and that won the Riddler in 1968 in Detroit. A lot of history here. Mm -hmm. A lot of history. <laughs> so well done too, eh? You guys restored oh, yeah. so nice. Like, I mean, let's face it, something like this would be daunting to paint and restore, no doubt in my mind. That's my favorite part, is trying to recreate the old paint. Yeah. <laughs> Just steering wheel up between your legs. Mm -hmm. uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. With the, you know, two blowers on it. and Holy <laughs> rootin', huh? A little tiny shifter on it, see a little shifter on yeah. it, and steering on it. Dan was big on... He only wanted you to see what he thought you should see. Right. So he would do a lot of really neat stuff. One of the things that he started doing on the ice truck that I thought was really bitching is he would chrome tubing and run the wires through them so they just disappear. That's And they nice only idea. come out right where it needs to come out. Yep. So Chuck Miller's fire truck. This one's got a, a winding rad. steering wheel, eh? It's got a tiller. It's horrible to drive with that thing. I mean, if you're Chuck Miller size, it's easy. He's about Jolene size. And for me, it's like I have scars on my knees from that thing whipping back around. Yeah, I could see that happening. Mm -hmm. So you would keep that chrome place in business. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rooting. So this is the grasshopper, which is really bitchy like this was built look at the inside of this one and it was on the cover of hot rod in 1959 and it was a really important car but it got changed into another car so i i completely recreated this from the seven photos in the hot rod magazine it's the only time i've ever combed an engine block and heads i've never seen that before mm -hmm. i wouldn't recommend it Expensive, but it really is bitching. It has one of the rarest supercharger setups on the planet, uh, Tom Beatty. This was before the cogged belt, so they just keep adding belts until it stops slipping. There you go, and it took six. No, one, two, three, eight. Eight, eight, eight. on this one, his belly tank had ten. This is an early Olds as well. Wow. Blew my mind. Which leads us to the, the most ridiculous car of the group. Yeah, we've seen you ride this one. The bathtub. A twin bathtub, actually. This was built by Bob Reisner. And it, it, must, does, it, it almost would have been a fad at that time. Would it? Well, yeah, the themed cars were the fad. They, were, they would do the most ridiculous thing to get the kids to the car shows. Right. They may need to do it again. Mm. Yeah, you're not kidding. Yeah, they may need to do it again. Look at how little that T is next to the Batmobile. Yeah. 
<laughs> I, I noticed how small it was when, yeah. I, when we looked at the it. The wheelbase is six foot. Cracks me up. Do you have the story why it was hidden and why it was missing so long? You A little the, bit of it. Everybody, like the original builder has a story. The guy that had it for a while has a story. I don't know who to believe. I just know that it's my job to make it bitchin' when the time comes. Gotcha. I don't worry about the rest of it. Awesome. But I think I like that, how you get the show light up here. That light yeah, gives it a nice light box. Yeah, awesome. I had Scott Ian from Anthrax's 60th birthday here. They played a stage right there, set up under that light. So him and like 30 of his rock star friends came and played Jammed 44 him. songs nonstop on New Year's Eve. It was amazing. We didn't get our invite. <laughs> I just joke. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, well that's, thanks, Dave. I really appreciate it, it man. Anytime, that's awesome. Yeah, awesome. Glad to see you guys again. It's been awesome. a long time. You have a, a really nice spot to hang out. Yeah. And uh, do your do your work, right? Feel yeah. like getting inspired, walking here maybe a little bit, and then run I hope back so. out there and, and and do your thing. This is I awesome. need constant visual stimulation. Like that's yeah. how my brain works. Mm -hmm. I understand. So yeah, there's a lot of times where I'm just walking around, and then things just come we'll to you yep. and back to work you go all right everybody thanks a lot for coming back if you're wowed just as much as i am put a comment in and and tell gallopin how much you appreciate their uh, collection and um it's quite something else like really it is i don't think it's open to the public but it's i think if you knew dave at all um appointment only appointment only but we can work out stuff okay but uh, if you ever get a chance to come here, I suggest you do. And uh, it's just, it's just mind-blowing, the amount of work, the creativity, and the history, mm -hmm. basically. And uh, a lot of original all. thinking in this yeah. building. Uh, now, now I don't feel so bad when he tells me that Ed Roth never had a measuring tape. Now I don't feel so bad uh, because I don't use it much either. But. Um, Thanks a lot for coming back. We appreciate it. Come back tomorrow. We'll certainly be here.